Hello everyone and welcome to Ziram Astrology once again. This is my continuing series on the Nakshatra, its deities and symbolism. And as we all recall, in the Vedic Hindu system of astrology, known in Sanskrit as Jyotish, the 27 constellations and not the 12 star signs, which is the zodiac, are the key to understanding celestial influences on our planet and person. These 27 constellations are known as the 27 nakshatras or stars spanning 13 degrees 20 minutes each and then they are further divided into four parts of 3 degrees 20 minutes. So this is Zidam Astrology bringing you an alternative view, a new perspective on the stars in the sky. This slide deals with the terminology that I use at Zidam Astrology. It gives you a heads up as to some of the language and what they are ascribed to and how we use them. And this is the division of the sky into the signs, which is the 12 zodiac signs, or the Rasi or Rashi, as some people say, the nakshatras, which are the stars and paras, which are the steps in the nakshatras. And, you know, don't uh, bother with the moon and sun placement here. It is just arbitrary. And as you can see, I, I um, got this uh, visual from the Internet, a Joytish video. So all kudos to them and giving them their due as to my usage of it. I'm just using it for this training and educational purpose. And this is the zero degree of the 360 degree zodiac signs that we have, the 12 signs. And it's the Rasi is one of the 12 signs that give you your booth details, you know. In Western astrology, the sun sign is used. But in Vedic astrology, we use the moon sign where the moon is placed or posited at the time of your birth for the termination of your Kundali birth chart and what it will give you your feet. So this is the Rashi or zodiac sign. Then we have the nakshatras and the nakshatras represents the stars or the abodes which the fruits of our labor or karma is transferred and stored. You know the nakshatras dispense the fruits of our karma, the highest of which is our worship and meditation, which is the spiritual labor of life. So each um, sign has two nakshatras or two or part of another third nakshatra. It depends on how it's placed and how it, it falls. And then we have the padas. And the padas are nine padas in each nakshatra. You know, each rasi, sorry, has nine padas. So that you would find that these nine borders gives you the um, parts of the nakshatra that are posited in the sign. So it's just the terminology to give you a heads up as to the rashi, the nakshatra, the borders. And you know, based on a person's moon nakshatra at the time of birth, the Jyotish and Vedic astrology offers a more predictive, a powerful predictive technique, you know, compared to other forms of astrology, in my most humble opinion. And this is just, again, a summary. The 12 zodiac signs equates to 360 degrees. One zodiac sign or rasi equates to 30 degrees. One nakshatra is 13 degrees, 20 minutes. And one pada is 3 degrees, 20 minutes. So, you know, digest, read, look at it again at your leisure. And if you should have any queries or questions, just drop me a line at zidamastrology.com or zidamastrology at gmail.com. The symbol for Jaishtya Nakshatra comes to us from the old and ancient uh, Sanskrit text of a disk. You know, something circular, an amulet, a ring, an umbrella. And this is what gives us our symbol. And Anjaishta means eldest or the first one. And this lunar mansion's lord or deity is Lord Indra. You know, he's the first amongst the gods. And the highest or the higher purpose of Jaishta 
natives is to protect their family and surroundings. You know, they should be careful not to create their own misfortune, just like what Lord Indra did. And because Lord Indra felt, you know, he was the most powerful, he was the greatest amongst the gods, he felt that he can tell them what they can do and how they have to worship. But Lord Vishnu soon cleared him of that misconception and indicated that they should be only looking at their dharma, their responsibilities in accordance with the laws you know, of, 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 of the land. And he fought a battle with Indra because Lord Indra was trying to get people to do what he wanted. But Lord Vishnu said no. And Lord Vishnu eventually became victorious. So, you know, Indra, this is what Indra did to himself, his own misfortune. So that the planetary ruler, as we move on, of Jaishta is Mercury, which is the, the link, or Mercury is the link between the material and spiritual world. And you know, at Jaishta, the, the change starts happening for the soul to move towards spirituality. You know, it is also interesting to know that the end of, of Jaishta Nakshatra in Scorpio is a Gandanta point. It's a point of transformation. It's, it's called a knot. You know, that Gandanta, that knot that we have to unravel. And it's usually a spiritual knot between, you know, water and fire signs. And that knot gives us a, tra a transformation point. And this disc is as ancient a civilization, dating back to the disc of Sabhu, which remains a mystery to archaeologists because this was in, you know, this was in Egyptian times. And up to this date, they cannot understand how that disc was created, with what the material it was created with. Was it some magical or mystical being? You know, it's still a mystery. In Vedic astrology, however, we ascribe the disc to Lord Vishnu and Mercury. In Hinduism, the Sudarshana Chakra signifies something bigger. You know, it is a symbol of protection as the chakra has the power to destroy anything in its path, with, with its blades being so sharp as a razor. But it's also a sign of hope, righteousness and knowledge. You know, there are several temples dedicated to this chakra this sudarshana chakra in india and you know people should take the time sometimes if this is their uh, birth nakshatra to visit and offer their you know their support their love their troubles and ask for blessings from the lord there are several tales that explains the origin of this symbol and how um Mahavishnu became the possessor of this this weapon and one such tale is that you know Mahavishnu offered a penance to God Shiva for years thousands of years to obtain a powerful weapon to tackle the this uh, the quarrel or disharmony caused by the asuras in the world as the the demons or the evil worshippers in the world once God Shiva opened his eyes when he was in meditation, he was so impressed by Vishnu's, Lord Vishnu's commitment and dedication, he created the Sudarshana Chakra. So it comes from something powerful to be used as powerfully as we can, but in a righteous way. So this is the story. And, you know, there are many more myths about it. But this is the one that I like to look at in because of the power of Jayeshta, because I always look at this as the elder. They want to guide us through wisdom, through the experience, through, um, you know, his his uh, want for doing something for his family and his surroundings. This is what I like about this nakshatra. But, you know, on the other side, there's also the, the betrayal of Jayeshta, because Jayeshta is the elder um, sister of Rohini. And Jaishta was really jealous of the attention that the moon gave to Rohini as the younger sibling and not her. So that Jaishta is also about betrayal, about secrets, about hidden debts, about, you know, things that may not come to light or that can come to light unexpectedly. So this is something we have to look at and watch that we need to be careful of with the Jaishta Nakshatra. And as I said, in Vedic astrology, this symbol denotes the energy of Lord Vishnu and, and Mercury, you know. This bestows protection and intellectual abilities. And those born under this nakshatra 
will defend the vulnerable or underprivileged in society. The ruling deity, Lord Indra, gives a shrewd and courageous nature to persons born with this nakshatra as their birth nakshatra. Righty then, Lord Indra is the god that we are going to deal with because he is the deity that is associated with Jaishtha nakshatra. I just spoke briefly on him in the previous slide, but he is considered as the king of gods. You know, he is considered as the king of the devas, the godlike deities, and the king of the Virga, which is the heaven in Hindu mythology. He is associated with the sky, lightning, all the weather patterns and storms, rains, the rivers, and also as the god of war. And as the god of war, he is the greatest warrior of all, the strongest in all the gods. And he is known as the defender of the gods who protects humanity against the evil forces. You know, it is believed that his powerful weapon, the Vajra, has been made from the bones of sage Dadeshi. And Lord Indra also uses the bow, a net and a hook in battle when he has to be engaged in battle. And he has a set order to the cosmos and is regarded as a fertility god as well. One of the powers that he's supposed to have as an all-powerful god is to revive slain warriors who had fallen in battle. In fact, in the Rig Veda, the oldest of the Sanskrit texts, or the Vedas, they have more than 250 hymns dedicated to him, which is one of the most number this is the highest number of hymns dedicated to any god which really speaks to his importance as a heavenly god and you know they call him other names like sakra parandara um svargapati and others so this is what lord indra does he has power he has all the power he is the king of the gods but you have to use that power wisely so this is the lesson this is the background of the deity for the Jaishta Nakshatra. Jaishta Nakshatra is identified in the night sky as the brilliant red star Antares and this star resides at the heart of Scorpio and is many times larger than our own sun. So this is one of the fixed stars that we have in the Jaishtra Nakshatra, which is 1640 to 30 degrees Scorpio. And then at 19 degrees Scorpio, we have Serpentis, the accursed degree, and it's a malefic degree. So that you know, if any one of your planets are posited in that degree, of this nakshatra it brings you know tragedy and misfortune at 1923 we have the north scale which is the zuben askemali and you get honors and wealth here where if you have jupiter mercury or mars it will be a fortunate position to have you know for politics and you'll get a brilliant mind success in sports and whatnot at 2204 scorpio you have the alpha serpentis which is success followed by four so initially you know will gain success but probably your attitude like lord indra in jaishta will bring you accidents and you know problems and love and loss so the unfortunate placement of planets here can come from saturn and mars and then Finally, we have a 2348 Scorpio, a Gina, which brings high morals, good health, and the fortunate planets here are Venus and Jupiter. So these are some of the fixed stars that we have in Jaishtha Nakshatra in the year 2022. Right, the Padas that are in the Jaishtha Nakshatra comes through here. At uh, the first Pada, we find um, it falls in the Sagittarius Navamsh and it's ruled by Jupiter. You know, you deal with your financial interests, which will keep you occupied. You, so in this Dharma Pada, you talk about money, higher studies. And then you have the second Pada, um, which will obviously follow from Sagittarius to Capricorn. Then the third Pada will be in Aquarius. And the fourth Pada will be Pisces. So you have your Dharma Atta, Kama, and Moksha Padas here giving you specific significations for the Jayeshta Nakshatra. 
Jaishta Nakshatra resides in the um, zodiac sign of Scorpio. And this is some of the char characteristics that we see here. The planetary ruler is Mars. We have already gone through um, Lord Indra as the deity, who is the real ruler of the um, Nakshatra Jaishta. We have this being a fixed sign. We have the tarot card being the death card. But it's not a physical death. It's more of an ending and new beginnings of something. We have the Manipura Chakra um, assigned to this Rashi. And, you know, the the or some of the significations that we have in Scorpio is the chronic or incurable diseases, age, you know, acute mental anguish and water signs are exceptionally emotional and ultra sensitive they are also highly intuitive so that you know you can be mysterious as the ocean itself it's all about the water you know and they love um, conversations and intimacy but they rarely do anything openly or, or you know and they are always there to support their loved ones and for family and this is what Jaishta remember Lord Indra his one is his concern is to de, um, protect the humanity from the evil forces he's the defender of the gods as it were so it all rolls into the characteristics of Scorpio for this Jaishta Nakshatra right we come to the characteristics now of the planet mercury in scorpio and why did i choose mercury because mercury is the planetary god of jaishta nakshatra and mercury the position of mercury in a chart by the house or the bava shows what the native thinks and talks about and where they get their ideas you know where the mind is very active where it's sorting classifying analyzing discarding and communicating what has been experienced in the affairs of that house so if mercury in your kundali or birth chart um falls in scorpio and and the house that scorpio is is your seventh house then you would want to talk about your spouse your relationship you'd want your mind will be active on getting a partner or networking and communicating about partners so you know this is what we have to understand about your kundalini to tell you what mercury will be for you in your chart so again you are seeing the importance of of us here having your specific information to read for you specifically and you know with mercury in scorpio persons will have a quick and powerful mind but they are intensely secretive you know you would be the original sherlock holmes you will be able to ferret out information and all kinds of secrets because you are very perceptive and far-sighted and clear-sighted but you can be also overly critical your research and security mind will give you a shrewd and penetrating mind you know and you will have great instincts that are able to get at the causes beneath the surface of life it can be very psychic and intuitive to be born with mercury in scorpio in a particular house and probably the first house will do you well a well-placed mercury gives verbal fluency dexterity and logical reasonable judgments in communication individuals with mercury in scorpio may however struggle with the darker sides of life and may see the more negative parts of human nature in individuals around them because you remember you are far-sighted and clear-sighted in this genome if you have mercury in scorpio and people with mercury in, in scorpio could make good detectives or researchers as i said as they will get to the heart of any matter at hand so this is some of the characteristics of mercury in scorpio but it all depends on the bava or the house that is it that mercury is posited in in scorpio in your booth chart so gain gain your report and get that insight for you 
Zidam astrology is all about research, you know, and with the union of tarot and Vedic astrology that I have brought to you and the method that I utilize in terms of my transit and my tarot trine series for horoscopes other than the daily horoscopes. These are some of the um, themes that we look at in Jeshta, um, which is the elder star. And you know the nakshatra, what is the, we went through the symbol and its meaning and its import to Jaishta nakshatra. We went through Lord Indra. We, I gave you some of the characteristics of Mercury. You know, but there are so many others as you see here. It's water, it's fixed, it's sattva. You know, the animal is the meal day. And what does that have to do with Jaishta and how people behave or how people view them? The sound that you should have in your mind if you are Jaishta native is, you know, this, these are the sounds. Nu, ya, yi, yu. And there are so many other things, as you can see here, so that these are just some of the characteristics that we have to pull together, some of the themes that we have to pull together when we are analyzing your birth chart at Zidam Astrology, where your nakshatra is, what is your birth chart nakshatra, what is your janam um, nakshatra, and all these themes that will give us an insight. And this is the depth that we go to in Vedic Astrology to guide you, to offer you some insight and guidance through your choice of choosing Vedic Astrology as the path to guide you through life and to take that journey over the sea of life. One of the other themes that I look at at Zidam Astrology to guide me when I try to put together your Kundali or your birth chart when you request it is the Vishnu avatar for the planetary um, ruler of the nakshatra and the Vishnu avatar for Mercury who is the planetary ruler of Jayishta is Balarama and Balarama is said to be the eldest brother of Lord Krishna. It is believed you know that he's engaged in many adventures alongside his naughty brother and but Balarama is really worshipped independently, you know, but stories always focus on his great strength. He is usually shown with, you know, pale skin in contrast to Lord Krishna's blue skin. Balarama is sometimes described as an incarnation of Shesha, Naga Shesha, you know, the serpent associated with the deity Lord Vishnu, who is one of the Trimurtis of the Hindu pantheon and Lord Krishna is regarded as an incarnation of Lord Vishnu and you know some uh, traditions regard him as one of the ten principal avatars of Vishnu himself but then we have both Balarama and Lord Krishna sharing a strong bond with contrasting behavior because Krishna is charming you know and, and due to his his beautiful countenance but Balaram, Balarama has a masculine strength his weapons were the plow and the mace the gada and the hala so that you know in vedic texts his strength is depicted as being spiritual and not physical because spiritual strength follows the spirit soul even to the next transmigration or the next life so balarama is believed to possess a never-ending strength and this goes in hand in hand with the ruler the deity who is ruling jayishta nakshatra lord indra remember lord indra is the all-powerful god he's the king of gods so that balarama's strength is is really aligned and part of all this power that comes in jayishta nakshatra but Balarama is also signified as the god of agriculture and strength. He is the harbinger or the, the um, holder of knowledge of agricultural tools and prosperity. So, you know, he represents of one of the three transcendental elements, which are Sat, Sit and Ananda. Brahma represents Sat, which means eternity and, and truth. You know, hence he's worship as a supreme teacher. He's also the source of knowledge for all agriculturists in accordance with Hinduism and its mythology. 
with Bhagwan's blessings I have also and always given to him at the end of these videos and these messages. I hope that all is well with you and that your visit with Sidam Astrology and this video brings you joy and happiness and some further knowledge that you were not aware of before. Thank you for listening and I hope something new and exciting enters your thoughts and enables your dreams. Be safe, happy and healthy until we meet again. See you next time. Take care. Bye.